So welcome back everybody. In today's episode, we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna go over two thermal scopes by DNT. And the cool thing is we have a 256 resolution and then we have their highest end model with a 640. So today's video is not a review. It's to show you the difference between a 256 all the way up to a 640. Is it worth the upgrade? I just did a full review on the 256 model and I must say it is a bargain for the price. I'll put a link to the video at the end of this. I'm currently doing a full review on the 640 resolution. That'll be out soon. In those videos, we go over all the details, all the internal menus, the options, prices, everything that you need to know. In today's video, while I have this scope here, before it goes back, I wanna do something that you don't see many people do. A true side-by-side -side comparison of 256 to 640 to help you determine which one is gonna be the right one for you. Okay, so here's the test everybody wants to see. Here is the HS635, the 640 resolution at 50 yards. Pay attention, it is zoomed in to three power. I wanted to match up to the same three power that the HS225 has right here that you're seeing. Now that makes a big difference. Every time you zoom in, your image gets more pixelated. So right now, you can see there's more detail in the 635, but wait till I zoom back out to one and a half power a little bit later on to show you how much clearer it gets. It's amazingly clear. So here we are at 100 yards, again, HS635, and we're about to shoot back over to the 225 model. Here it is right here. So you're losing detail on the lower resolution. That's to be expected, although the white hot seems a little whiter. I could have brightnesses off inside of the scopes. They're probably not exactly the same. So 200 yards with the HS635 and 200 yards with the HS225. I'm glad that I got my dog out there so you can kind of see maybe what a coyote sized animal would look like. So as we're walking off paying attention, look, you can see just more detail in the tree with the 635 than you can with the 225. So 300 yards, this is a long ways away, but I, you can still tell that's a human. You can see my dog. Plus we're gonna go to black hot here in a minute, which really gives you some good detail. So same distance, but with the lower resolution HS225. I still think that's great for a budget scope, y'all. This is an excellent price point and you can make out what you're looking at out there. So now let's move over to black hot. So fit, quick 50 yard shot with the 635, up really, really close, a lot of detail. There's the 225 at 50 yards. Now we're back out at 100 yards with the 635, still looking really, really good. Here's you a shot of the 225. You see I'm already getting pixelated there. Black hot shows fine detail, so you can start to see a big difference at 100 yards between the scopes. So 200 yards, you see I'm getting my dog to kind of move around in front of the camera. I can't wait to show y'all one and a half power. And let's move over to the more affordable HS225. Definitely we're losing some uh, detail and clarity out there, but still very, very usable. Nothing wrong with that at all. All right, so I'm just kind of playing around with him, getting him to run around so you can kind of see what an animal that size looks like. And now we're going to step on back to no zoom. Check this out, 635. Look at the detail now. This is what I was telling you. This is where the 635 is really going to shine. And look at the field of view. This is no zoom on the 225. I prefer the 635 for this reason alone, the wide field of view. So if you do up close varmint hunting, you've got it with that scope. Whereas the 225 is quite zoomed in. I guess that's good if you're using long range hunting, but I like to have a lower power zoom for the detail, the clarity, and uh, the wide field of view for up close. So now can y'all tell the difference? Oh my goodness, the 635. Look at this, 100 yards, super clear, absolutely. Check it out compared to the 225. See, I'm already getting a little pixelated. Starting to lose some detail in my arms, but again, not bad for a budget scope. So check me out as I start to kind of walking away. That is very, very usable. You can tell a huge difference. So I did a quick little stop at about 150 yards. This is again is the 635, no zoom. Let's bump it over to the 225. Zoomed in quite a bit more, just at base level zoom. So we'll go on just a little bit further here, but y'all can clearly see the detail difference between the two. <laughs> playing around with Ruger. I'm gonna get him to run back, but uh, oh my goodness, this 635 looks amazing. So nice, so clear. We're actually about to shoot over to some animals. I caught some deer on some nights, 
and uh, you can kind of look at it deer size animal with one of these. I know y'all may be interested in that as well. So here we are getting ready to kick over to the deer scenes. We're going to start out with the HS 635. So these deer are about 200, 250, yeah, no, they're every bit of 250 yards. They're bedded up. See, I'm zoomed into six power right here. And I want to show you all this uh, super resolution. Look how clear that is with one and a half power. But there's a feature inside of this scope that you can turn off and on that actually will clean up the pixelated image. And you really see that whenever you zoom in. You'll for sure see it on the uh, lower quality or lower resolution HS225. So six power zoomed in. I'm going to go down to... Uh, this super resolution. So it's currently off. I'm going to turn it on. See it just kind of washed the image and cleared it up some. You'll really be able to tell this right here on the 225. The 635 is already so clear it doesn't benefit from this feature like the 225 does. So again about 250 yards zoomed into six power. There's nine power. Now we're getting really washed out. That's a bit much zoom for a 256 resolution scope. 12 power. Now you can just see the pixels dancing around everywhere on the screen. But let's go back in the menu here and turn on this super resolution. We'll turn it off. We'll turn it on. We'll show you that. Look how washed out that is. Oh my goodness. This is what your typical 256 looks like. And this is on the slowest power where it should be its clearest. So we'll go ahead and zoom on in. This is what I'm used to. This is why I've never been a fan of 256 resolutions in the past. This is what my 256 uh, monoculars look like. And this is probably what a lot of y'all have experienced and gave you a bad taste in your mouth for a lower resolution scope. Now watch this when I turn it on. See how it just washed over all those pixels, cleared the image up. Wait till I zoom back out and you'll see that you now have an actual usable scope. There it is off, on, it makes a heck of a difference. So here's the 225 with the white hot palette. I won't go through all the details of these scopes because we've already did a full review on this, but just showing that resolution again. See, that's so blurry you can't tell what that is with the super resolution off. But when you turn it on, you can kind of start picking out ears, a snout, getting a good general idea. Hopefully I zoom back out here and uh, show you how good it looks. In the past, I've never been able to look at animals that far. So yeah, there's three power, four and a half. Let's go in and uh, make some more adjustments to the scope here. Yeah, see, with it off, not usable. That super resolution really works. So here is the 225. There's some. This is just another night right here. I recorded some more deer for y'all. Tried to spend a lot of nights out there catching this. Different humidities, different heat. All those deer around 250 yards. That one way in the back pushing 300. That one right there is probably 300. These are 200 and something. So you'll see me go through a few different zooms right here, settings, just to give you a general idea what to expect with deer size game. 12 power, ah, really sticking the three to six power range for this scope seems to give you enough clarity that you can kind of see what you're doing. We've been having a lot of deer coming out here on the property lately, which is a good thing. Okay, now here's the 635. So notice the difference, same group of deer. They've moved around just a little because I had to go in and swap out scopes. See that one way back there is about 300 yards away. These right here, 200-ish, a little over. Look at the clarity difference between the 635 and the 225. This is making a huge difference right here, especially uh, staying on that lower power. And again, I can't brag enough about the field of view. When scanning or shooting up close, I really like the wide field of view of the 635. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bump it over to, I believe, okay, zooming in right here. I thought I was gonna change the color palettes. So even three power, still very usable. Four and a half is great. Six power, I mean, look at how usable that is. I am in love with this scope right here. And the price point that it's at, y'all go check it out. There's just nobody else that I've noticed. I haven't looked at all scopes, but nobody seems to be at this price point for this type of resolution. You could easily make a shot right there. Again, that's over 300 yards, that deer. You could easily make a shot on these uh, animals, even in pitch black dark like we're seeing right now. 
All right, let me see what's coming up next. Okay, I just kicked it over to white hot mode. Really, really good for scanning. Love that mode for scanning. Stuff just pops, but I really like black hot for the finer detail and shooting, but it's just personal preference. The other two modes, not necessarily my favorites, but again, you may find a mode that you like the best. So check out the detail right here. This is how we're gonna wrap this up. This is pitch black dark, y'all. No lights on, no nothing. You can literally see the Chevy emblem in the front of my truck. When I zoom in, you can see the four by four on the back of the truck. This, right, this scene right here just told me all I need to know. This scope is by far the clearest thermal that I've been able to get my hands on. You know, we're not talking a $10,000 thermal here or something super expensive. We're talking something a fraction of that cost. Look at there, you can see four by four on the back of the truck. You see Z71 over there. You can even see all the individual screws in the metal roof up there. Look, see the little black dots that keep popping out? That is crazy. All right, so what did you think of the video? It took me quite a while to capture some of this footage here, waiting for some animals to come out. Of course, hopefully enjoyed the distance test, seeing people, uh, the resolutions. I'll tell you what, I did not realize how good their super resolution was. So the 256, for example, you've seen whenever I had it on lowest resolution, zoomed in, how washed out it was. That's been my personal experience with a lot of lower resolution type thermals, from inoculars to scopes. They've just been meh. They are what they are. This is the first 256 that I've tried that I thought was a bargain for the price asked and actually worth using. Personally, I bought a 384 resolution scope from a different manufacturer quite a while back because I knew 256 just was not gonna be suitable. That was until I actually tested this one and seen how clear it is, especially when you turn on that super resolution. It basically takes all that pixelated image and cleans it up. Now with that said, when we go over to the 640 resolution, we're talking night and day difference here. And and the colder and clearer the night, the less humidity, you can really start seeing finer detail of this that you just can't with the 256. Now that's to be expected due to the price point this is in. Now let's talk about that. What this scope is currently going for is almost exactly what I paid for my 384 resolution scope. This is an unbelievably good price. Now they've recently went up due to tariffs. That's out of all of our control. It is what it is. Even with current increased pricing, this is still a killer deal. Go look at some other manufacturers 640 resolution thermals and you'll see this is a considerable amount less. The other brand that I run, for example, this is about 12 to 13 hundred dollars less than the 640 of the brand that I currently own. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Did this video help make your mind up on which one's right for you? Are you going for the bargain 256 that seems to have probably the best resolution of any 256 I've tested? Or are you splurging for a 384, which I currently don't have to show you, or a 640 resolution thermal? I understand for some people you're going to want the best clarity that you can possibly get and some of you are going to want the best bang for your buck. So I have links down in the description. You can pick the 256 up on Amazon or their website. And currently, last I checked, the 640 is available on their website only. I'll try to put a link down to both. So if you have any experience with these or you're planning on picking one up, let me know. Drop me a comment. And then coming up in the future, we're going to do a little coyote hunting and critter hunting with this particular setup on my new AR platform.